The Wands never win on Nashville's Rock Station 1029. The Buzz, what's happening, guys? I'm Andy Heron, broadcasting live from the Buzz Studios, built by American Express Business. The card for local business owners don't do business without it. You know, speaking of the Wands, I remember once upon a time playing some festival with them. I can't remember what the festival was, but my band camped right next to them in a tent, and those guys went all night drinking harder than most bands I've ever seen. And I remember waking up and hearing a lot of people getting sick in the early morning hours. But the next part of the next morning, they were totally fine, like true rock and roll stars. And speaking of true rock and roll stars, on the phone, Colleen of Love's Tragedy. It was good running into you the other night whenever I was down at uh, the place. What is that place called where Haley got flying the plate? Yeah, the, at the Flying Saucer. Haley St. John got her fourth plate, if you can believe <laughs> it. And it's funny because I feel like someone who's drank 800 beers, like for instance, I had an alcoholic aunt growing up and she looked like she had 800 beers, but Haley St. John does not look that way. It's kind of unreal. Yeah, I don't, I, I'm not a big drinker. I used to be when I was younger, but not so much anymore. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm definitely yeah, not I, I, I can't take how it makes me feel like, you know, the hangovers yeah. and oh yeah, yeah, I just don't do it much anymore, but I'm not against it. I, I, I'm proud of her. <laughs> she can yeah. pull it off. <laughs> oh yeah. She's carrying that torch. You know, I remember being, and I was a young rock and roller. I was on the road with a lot of like older bands. And yeah. uh, I remember they would always say to me like, oh, when you get older, you, you can't you can't drink like you used to. And and I would laugh. And now that I'm you know getting up there myself, I'm like, oh, wow, they were not kidding. Like, this is no. horrible. So, yeah, I'm, I'm a two beer man myself these days. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's about me too. Probably one, yeah, actually. <laughs> exactly. But en- enough about our fr- our new bo- our newfound sobriety that Colleen and I share. But uh, yeah, you right. guys, you guys have a brand new song that I actually played last week called "The Storm," and it's a really rad tune. And it's not even Thank out you. yet. When does the storm come out? Uh, well, we've sent it out for distribution, so it should be coming out pretty soon. I don't think we have an actual date as of yet, but. Um, we'll definitely be playing it and another new song um, at our show on Friday the 10th, just coming up with Mr. Yeah. Gray. So we're really excited about that. Yeah, and the storm is, we're, we're very proud of it. Turned out great. You know, we recorded it with David Dix at Red Feather Recording. He's my drummer and uh, he does an amazing job. So I love that. What was to look th- into if you're looking for a recording engineer in the studio. Yeah, David Dix. I like that. How long ago was it you guys were up here? Has it been like, has it been like five, four or five years since Love's Tragedy well, was up here? Well, I mean, Love's Tragedy itself has had a, a long history with the buzz um, ever since the beginning back in 2009. Love it. Um, back when Al John first left the station, actually. I think that was our first time on the station. Oh, nice. When, it was when he left. Um, and and then, you know, it's just been throughout the years. We were came in with Tony Stone back in the day and then two years ago we came in to release pieces of me with you guys that's right so it was 2019 <laughs> that's right it wasn't that long ago then i feel like sometimes i never know especially now what year it is but you guys definitely right, took some time away it really is a blur you guys took some time off after that was that just because of the whole 2020 thing or do you guys well, who's all in the band these days as far as lineup well goes? i mean it's not the original original members we don't have our original bass player uh, billy knees um but we do have chad grant who's very popular in the local scene and everybody yeah. loves Chad and he's been on and off with us since we got back together in 2000, what was it? 19. And yeah. then I, I got very ill myself. So I had to take a couple of years off and, and get myself healthy again. So um, okay. we decided as a group to come back together and kind of finish up these songs that we kind of had sitting in song limbo and, uh, and get them recorded, and and my birthday was coming up, and I said, well, hey, let's just do a show. (laughs) I want to play a show. (laughs) Yeah. I'd like to clarify for the kids listening, Colleen got very ill because she drank too much one night. She had a hangover that lasted two years, because that's what happens when you get older. Let that be a lesson to you, kids. Right. It was a two-year hangover, so don't ever do it again. <laughs> I've had a few of those myself. Well, I'm glad you're better and you're you're healthy and ready to rock again. You guys are playing at Bowie's this Friday, September 10th, with our old friends, Mr. Gray, who I've had up here as well, too. And I wanted to yeah. ask you, Colleen, what's your thoughts, and I'm not trying to cancel you or trap you, so say whatever you want. What are your thoughts on the fact that Bowie's is a rather controversial venue in Nashville now obviously last year they were one of the few band or few uh, venues that was having live music when a lot weren't doing it yet and now they're one of the few venues who will will not have a uh, where you have to show your vax card or show a, a negative COVID test they're just kind of staying open to everybody what's your opinion of the controversy about those guys well you know there's there's people that come from two groups they're either you know they they want to be super super safe and they need they need that confirmation of the vaccination to make them feel safe to go into a place and the rest of us are just 
like if I catch it, I catch it. If I die from it, I die from it. And that's just what it was meant to be. Yeah. So we're just not going to let any more time be stolen of, away from us. And we just want to play music. And the people that come want to just hear it. They don't want to have those restrictions placed on them. So everybody who goes into the uh, Bowie's, they know what they're getting into. They know the risks they're putting themselves that, into, yeah. you know. And it's the same with the bands that play the, the venues that are open to no, you know, mandatory vaccinations or testing or whatever it is that they're, they're trying to impose on everybody. Yeah. Um, but we just want to get together and have a good time and we don't want to have those restrictions placed on us because, you know. Yeah. No, it's rock and roll. To me, rock and roll is supposed to be going against the norm. And a lot of people nowadays right. seem to think it's the opposite. But also, I will say, I feel like in reference to what you just said about uh, we don't want any more time stolen from us, I think that's a true statement because a lot of people forget that as they're dealing with the COVID stuff, which I know a lot of the stuff's going on, people are dealing with a lot of stuff with it. But uh, they do seem to forget sometimes that the clock is also ticking on their lives and the time is ticking by and you won't get these years back. That's a really good point. Yeah, they're stealing our moments from us. And, and uh, those of us who want to go to Bowie's, they, we don't want our moments stolen. So we go to Bowie's, and Michelle's been amazing. We love her so much, and she's helped me put this show together. And um, she is, she's just been standing strong against everybody else, and we love wow. her for it. You I know? love it. And I wish more people would do that, to be honest, if she's listening. Michelle, right. thank you. We respect you very much. But so what's coming up next for 2022 with uh, Love's Tragedy? You guys thinking maybe some more shows, maybe some more songs, maybe get Chad well, to come um, in here and show me his workout routine? We unfinished songs. It's mostly up to me to get them finished. <laughs> oh, and I feel <laughs> and that. And then go into the studio and finish them up, which we, we have been doing. We have another song in the works. Um, and, you know, I'm working on some other ones that have been waiting for me. Um, but yeah. I also have, you know, they've got other projects as well. You know, David Dix has his projects. Chad has his projects. Keith has his projects. So we're all doing different things, but I think we like to come together every so often and, and just, you know, bring these songs back and pull out the old ones and make new ones. And it's just uh, because of the way COVID is and the world is, we're just trying to trying to branch ourselves out into different things. And uh, if another show comes up, it might, but, you know, I'd have to ask the guys if they were up for it, you know, because they've got busy schedules. But, you know, it's just about making the music for me. Yeah, no, absolutely. I and love with that. These particular guys, I really love these guys. They're so talented, and they they inspire me musically. So it's 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 easy to jump back into that particular project. Yeah, you've got one heck of a backing band. That's for sure. You have a really solid lineup in that band. I will say that. Yeah, absolutely. Always have. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Well, Colleen, I'm glad you came on the show. It's great to talk to you as always, and it was great to see you the other night at the Flying yeah, Saucer. Yeah, I'm going to you again soon. Yeah, hopefully so. I'll definitely see you this you Friday night. Come to my show, right? <laughs> I will be there this Friday night, September 10th at Bowie's, of course. You got Mr. Gray opening up the show, and you've got Love's Tragedy, and it's an early show. It says on the website it's around 6 o'clock. Is that true? Yeah, it's a 6 to 9.30 show, and then okay. afterwards, Contagion is playing, so if you want a badass oh, cover okay. band, yeah. you got Ron Cat and the, and the boys from Contagion. Um, going to be playing uh, till 2 a.m. in the morning and I think we're all going to hang out there and just party after we're done playing so <laughs> I love that well, yeah I it's an early wait. show but we wanted to get it done early so we could party for the rest of the night no I love that well we will see you there and I can't wait to get this new song we're going to spin it right now brand new stuff from Love's Tragedy coming out soon The Storm on Nashville's Rock Station 102 on The Buzz